Hi, my name is Daniel Posny, and this is called Shifting Perspective. It's just a short little video call recording that takes a certain topic that's kind of figured out in the morning and uh, shifting the perspective on it. So let's take this idea of helping other people that are um, going through some kind of illness or disease. So what do we normally do? We give them compassion and empathy if we've suffered that same kind of illness or disease. Maybe we've got some recommendations. Um, maybe, we, maybe we have a good doctor to send them to. Um, maybe we support them with loving prayers and meditation. Maybe if you live in a place like Sedona, you got lots of friends that are doctors and nurses and healers and uh, you know all different kinds of things. Um, but I was I was wondering about what is the best thing that we can do with this and stay in the highest vibration of consciousness around the whole thing. And if you ever read a book called uh, Course in Miracles, you'll really get blown away about what's really happening here. So I'll just touch on some of this. But what I remember it saying is when you're in illness or disease, um, you're out of love and uh, you're out of your connection with God, source, creator. And if you were in connection with that, then you wouldn't have the illness. That's a really radical approach to that. And it just brings up all kinds of resistance and questions and things. But I was sitting in meditation with my wife the other day, and I was wondering about this. And uh, an epiphany came in, and it said, well, if there are certain things that we really know to be true through research, science, scientific experiments, um, decades of practice, um, if you're on this call or on this video, you probably know about the stuff already, but um, just want to reiterate that we are all connected, and there's uh, quantum physics experiments that have been proven that, yeah, we are all connected, and our thoughts and beliefs are um, affecting our DNA and affecting our reality, and it, everything is made up of photons, or we can affect the photons that surround a DNA molecule and stuff like that it just goes really deep. But the point is um, we do affect our reality and dive into that if you want. I've already dove into that with, I remember watching a movie called What the Bleep or Down the Rabbit Hole, a um, little bit of The Secret. All those um, movies are great examples of experiments and research and scientific information that um, proves all this. And then you've got people like Louise Hay, um, Joe Dispenza, Dr. Bruce Lipton, uh, Yvette Rose, all these people that have done all this, Greg Braden, that have studied all this from a scientific perspective and actual practice that they've seen, and Dr. Gabor Mate is another one, that have seen that if we were to look at the emotional trauma or the negative emotions in the person, we can correlate to what correlate that to what illness or disease they're more susceptible to, to getting. So um, like Dr. Dr. Gabor Mate would say, um, there's three basic personality types, the A, the B, and the C. And the A person is one that's go, go, go all the time and lots of energy. And they're the ones that are more in the same energy and frequency of heart attack and stroke and that kind of thing, which is the overdoing it kind of thing. And then the C type is the person that is always um, pushing away from themselves and always a people pleaser and doing for others, not really taking care of themselves. They're more in the energy of cancers and things and autoimmune and stuff like that, where their boundaries of themselves and their um, knowing their needs of themselves is not as strong as a, another person. And then the B is that person that's kind of right in the middle and more of a balanced perspective. So a great book to, um, to read on this is called When the Body Says No, and he explains all this. So I'm just kind of touching on this so that maybe if you're interested in this, go ahead and do some research on it because there's lots to be had. Um, so I want to kind of couch this by saying, I'm presenting some things that are pretty out there, pretty radical. And, but, the, but the reality is that they've been around for about 50 years. <laughs> it's just that the normal stream of education and consciousness doesn't really give this to you because it doesn't really fit the model of um, um, the, the main medical stream and uh, making things be, um, why can't I think of this word, uh, making money. So some of these things aren't really making money things. And so it's not um, supported by the mainstream medical, but they've been around for a long time. And that doesn't mean that they're, um, 
they're valid if they just because they've been around for a long time, but they've been around and have served <clears throat> serve people and have <clears throat> affected a lot of healing for people. And I'm a, I'm, I can tell you stories about what I've gone through, what people that I know have gone through, but basically do your own research. If you haven't already, there's lots of information about this. So I want to take two ideas, two sides of this and say, on the one hand, we're all connected. We're not separate from each other. There's all kinds of studies and extra experiments that have said, yeah, at the smallest level on the quantum level, we are all connected. There's been um, experiments where they kind of tickled this molecule, this atom, and then way thousands of miles away, another atom that was once a part of that is now being tickled kind of thing. So they're all connected at the very basic level. So if that's true that we're all connected and we're not separate, it's not just a spiritual idea. Wow. So that kind of blows your mind a little bit. So really our thoughts and beliefs and emotions and the vibration of consciousness, the frequency that we normally carry does affect our reality and what we attract to us. I know that at least in my life, um, the work that I've been doing in my life, my life is completely changed because of the way that I think and believe. For instance, with this whole COVID thing, I, I know that it's true that it's a very valid virus and a lot of people were killed and hurt and a lot of suffering happened. And yet I held a different um, consciousness, a different belief about it. And I didn't see a lot of it, even though I'm in a small town without a hospital with millions of visitors visiting every year. I didn't see the big explosion of it. And I know it exists out there in different places, but my reality was different. And that's the way it is with a lot of different things is that we all carry our own reality, this own sliver of perspective to, determined by our beliefs and what we hold to be true. And it's not saying that this other reality that say COVID or something is a very deadly virus that's killing millions of people. Yes, that's completely true. It's just that my what I saw, what I realized and what I perceived was different than that. So um, the other thing is uh, our bodies are talking to us all the time. And Louise Hay and uh, Yvette Rose did a lot of study on this, decades of research on this with therapy with their uh, clients. And basically it's one of the most amazing things if you would think of, wow, how would God, the universe creator, give me something so that I could really see how I'm doing emotionally and energetically, and it's your body. So for instance, I've got a little lower back pain going on. I was doing a lot of painting in my camper, a lot of turning and twisting and all the stuff you do with painting. So yeah, there's a physical reason why my back is kind of out of whack right now. But also the lower back energetically is about um, feeling financially supported. And so at the same time, what's happening now is that um, the sessions are at, are at a kind of a low right now, and we're getting ready to go on a trip. So there's this thing going on, oh my gosh, am I gonna have enough money to support the trip? And I haven't been having sessions, ah. So all that is kind of, it's in my lower back right now. Um, I've had skin cancer before and skin cancer is about what you show to the world. It's the skin that you show to the world. And uh, your body is, has these different parts to it that are elements of your moving forward in life. Like, let's see, let's take the knees. So the knees are about being stubborn. The legs are about moving forward. The hands are about gripping and holding on to life. Your blood is about the joy of life. Your lungs are about grief and taking in all life and accepting all life. And it just goes on and on. And every illness and disease also has an emotional piece to it. So if you take that all together, if I take that all together and say, we're all connected, Dr. Emoto is another great example of that. He was doing studies with water that when he prayed or meditated to water molecules, he actually changed the molecules that were there consistently perfect. And then when he stated, I hate you, you're ugly, you know, all these things that the, the molecules would turn yellow and deformed and distorted. So again, there's, there's so much science to this. So if I take that together, that we are all connected. And then we take the thing about that my body is telling me how I'm doing emotionally and energetically through all the different parts and systems of my body. If I take those to get together and I see that someone is going through an illness, what is the best thing I can do? Well, our, our old self, our, the old paradigm is, 
um, bring them some hot soup or make them some meals or give them some love and support or pick up the kids from school for them or do whatever we can to be loving and supportive to them. And that's all awesome. But I want to raise that higher. And this takes a little bit or, or a lot of self-responsibility and, I don't know, gumption to say, wow, if we're all connected, maybe I look at their illness and see what the energetic emotional piece is by reading one of these books like like this one, which is called <laughs> Metaphysical Anatomy. I'll just say it to you. Metaphysical Anatomy, another one called um, Heal Your Body. If you look up the illness or the body part in the, one of those, you'll find some real insight about what's going on. So what I want to do is I want to look at whoever's having the illness, you know, usually someone close to me, and I say, okay, if they're going through an illness, what's the energetic or emotional piece to it? And do I have that sort of thing going on inside of me? So if I can look at that inside of me and they realize that we're all connected, then as I work on it and heal and integrate that possible imbalance within me, then I reflect that to them. Doesn't that blow your mind? <laughs> you think about that, you can have a direct uh, effect on somebody. And I know that there's, there's much more pieces to all this. There's genetic stuff and there's DNA and there's um, someone's not ready for healing and all that stuff. But there is the possibility that through your own um, self-discovery and your own inner work, you can actually directly affect someone in a positive way. And that also goes to say that you can affect someone in a negative way. And we do that all the time. You know, we, we say things to, to someone or about someone and it does affect them. Um, we, it either affects them physically, you know, in the moment or affects them, affects them on the more of a quantum level. So um, that's something that we can really focus on is, again, I'll say it again, so it's really clear. Someone is having an illness or a disease or a problem with their body and you say, okay, what is it about that? What's the emotional energetic piece of that? They've got a problem in their hand or they burnt their hand or they broke their ankle or um, they're working through breast cancer or they're working through uh, multiple sclerosis or something. And you look at the energetic part of that and you say, okay, I'm connected with this person. Do I have this, the energetic pieces of this inside of me? Let's take, um, let's take breast cancer. Let's say, um, so the, the thing about breasts is about nurturing and being nurtured. And it's all connected in with um, parent energy and how if you were loved and nurtured in a really healthy way by your parents, that's just one little piece to it. So you might say, well, yeah, you know, it wasn't perfect, but you know, I, I dealt with it and da, da, da. But there's always something in there that you, you maybe wish you could have had more of. And there's, this is a big topic. So I'm just, just barely touching on this. But if you recognize that there is some more nurturing that you could have had in your life, maybe your childhood wasn't perfect. Maybe your father wasn't around very much. Maybe, maybe your mother was busy or something and she was, they both weren't available for that loving, nurturing energy. Then that's where it connects in with your breast or as a man for your, on your chest. And men can get breast cancer too. So this is a part where you can say, okay, I'm really connected with this person. Can I see how I also wasn't nurtured 100% effectively in my childhood? And I also deal with that same kind of thing. Okay, then I can start to work on that myself and heal and integrate that within myself. So now we're doing two things. Now we're affecting ourselves and our own personal growth and our personal healing, but we also have the possibility of doing something profound and truly effective so if you really wanted to have uh, an effect on someone in a positive way, think about how, what is the highest thing that you could do? And I want you to also take this challenge. If you're thinking about what I'm saying and you have resistance, look into that. Look into the resistance of why you would not do that. Why would there be any part of you that wouldn't do it? Just do it. Why would you say, well, I know that maybe that's bullshit or um, I'm just used to, I'll just take them some, some good food or I'll, 
I do, I do it in a different way. You know, I, I usually help people in a different way. That's totally fine. But what if you open up to this possibility that there's, that we are all connected, that God is in everything. And even in this moment that you could directly affect someone in this way, we are going to this place. This, this is, this is what I would say, bringing in the, the ancient and ancestral of group healing and gathering together as a tribe for healing, like some tribes still do. And then going into the future that we, are, we realize that we're all connected and we work on it within ourselves so we can affect outside of ourselves with, the, with this other person. If you really look, start looking into the future of how healing might turn out, how it might, what it might go to, it's got to go there and beyond. <laughs> So we would look back at ourselves and go, wow, we didn't even realize that we we're all connected. We just thought it was a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And here we are, we're, we're in a, in a um, higher consciousness and higher frequency. And we see that, yeah, it's all true. All what ancient civilizations and uh, teachings were trying to tell us. So that's all I got, but that's, that's, that's a lot. So um, maybe you want to check this out and uh, see how it does positively affect you and another person. I love you. Thank you. Bless you and have a wonderful day.